I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos, where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good morning, good morning, Richard Lee. How are you doing on this wonderful, beautiful morning? I'm doing very well, thank you. And your melodious voice carries across the uh, the continents. Hmm. You know, I never thought about <laughs> that. Yeah, it must be definitely. You'd be great. Passing. You'd be around. great reading poetry. Oh, my wife actually writes. I should put some audio to her. Um, her words. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, I'll do that. That's a great idea. Thanks, Richard. What parts of the world are you in right now? I'm in Melbourne, Australia. Ooh, now you have an amazing voice as well. Oh, love it. Good, thank you. So which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this time? Well, I think that has to be my podcast called Short Films Teachers Love, mm. which is a half-hour show as an audio podcast, but a 10-minute show in video on YouTube. And in every episode, I ask my guests to share their three favorite short films. Mm. Yeah, pretty intriguing. Where did you come up with the idea for this uh, podcast, my friend? Well, it's actually uh, out of a failure <laughs> I had. I was trying, trying to run a social enterprise where I was encouraging teachers to use short films to engage their students in discussions about big issues in life. And um, that fell over. But I had all these contacts and I thought, I've got to do something with this. And uh, my passion remains for short films, uh, for creating them and finding them and sharing them. So I, I just built on where I'd gone. So um and I have to say, in preparing for this this discussion, you've you've got me doing a lot of thinking about where I'm at because um, I'm in an interesting space as I think about going forward. But I was counting up the number of videos that I've created over the um, last you know, probably 25 years, and it's approaching 500. Wow. And some of them, some of them have cost a few hundred thousand dollars, but most have been those that have been almost zero budget. Wow. I remember making a stop frame piece with my daughter when she was about five years old, something we whipped up before dinner. And it's still etched in my mind, and I think hers too. Mm. And, you know, and I love to continue creating because I get, you know, something we made that was almost no budget. Uh, I got an email from someone said, thank you so very much in an email. It's better than I could have imagined. You put my little dream into something I can keep and watch forever. Hmm. You know, why wouldn't you keep going doing stuff like that? Love it. So, um, Ooh, you, yeah. you hear, you've done your homework. The questions really are, allow individuals to reflect. Um, I'm glad that you took a bit more time just to do the work that's necessary. It, it definitely helps, doesn't it? Like going back and seeing these memories and how they connect. It's fascinating, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. And and even in the sharing, you know, the the what I call is my failed, but my big lesson of, of starting a social enterprise was about finding and sharing the work that others do. So the short films that I could never do, I never, you know, had time to do or could barely think of doing, let alone create work like um, Steve Cutts's animations. There's this one called Man, which is a dystopian history of human destruction of Earth's natural resources. And then mm. documentaries that allow us to see you know this one called something to tell you which gives us an idea about people with disabilities beautifully crafted stuff and and my friend and pastor alan who uses an evocative drama called hosea the love story as a metaphor for god's love i mean there's so many things hmm. that you can draw on as on camera talent that we see with youtubers and behind the camera talent we see with with youtubers it's such a a rich world and i love to use the connections that short films make with people that's great where's the best place for us to go find some of your content uh probably on the youtube channel called uh short films teachers love and and that's mainly films that come from the podcast that others have recommended. So not so much my stuff, but what people are actually using and why they're using them and how they're using them to educate and enlighten and connect. So that's that's the spot to go. There's Love a Facebook group and all these others, but that's a good place to start. Big question. Why will you continue? Oh, well... The short answer is yes, I think I have to continue just because that's what I love. Um, 
I I continue, I think, because I have this sort of, there's this cyclical love of filmmaking and film curating and film teaching and training. So I can't say exactly what the, what I'll be repeating or continuing, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure it'll have something to do with the art and craft and appreciation of short films. Hmm. Tell us one other thing you've done consistently over the last three years, Richard. I've consistently daydreamed and procrastinated too much, but I think you probably want something positive, don't you? No, I want the truth. <laughs> I'm good at the truth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but look, positive, and this is something I'm proud to share. I, I catch up regularly with my kids, and this has happened for a few reasons. Um, my girls are both in their teens now, and I find that you go from, you know, when they're kids, reading bedtime stories and visiting playgrounds to that era just slipping away so quickly to when they're teenagers and you've got less in common with them as they flex their, you know, independence muscles. Mm. Uh, and I had a friend who takes his kids out to a cafe regularly and I thought, that's such a good idea. So I started doing that a few years ago and for the last two years, I've made it a priority to set aside for one hour a week uh, just to focus on each of my girls around their interests and what they've what they're into and just really enjoy it and it's, mm. and it's great staying connected as a dad i love it why would you suggest that to someone else that's listening that they put that type of emphasis on uh, their children um well uh, it's you know it's a win-win all around it helps my wife it helps my kids and it helps me you know we've got um programs in australia for kids that are at risk for whatever reason and and where schools connect with local volunteers often an older person just to give them that kind of one hour a week and and the results are proven you know kids are more engaged in school more engaged in their strengths as they become more confident it just makes more sense and as parents we've got pole position for getting getting alongside our kids and supporting them so why would i recommend it why would I not? Hmm, love it. Amazing audience. You're hearing it live here from Richard Lee. Again, you can definitely connect with him via his uh, thingy that I do have the name right here. Don't say it, Richard. I will say it. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming up one time. Where is it? Where is it? Ooh. Wait one second. No, um, it's a long story, but... I do have your show notes here. It's just a matter that of um, right. oh, well, this is four interesting. words. Wait, wait, I'll get it. Like, oh no! I, oh, I almost oh, got it. Oh, it. short films sorry, teachers man. love. Oh, 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 that just makes it even more fun. Love it. <clears throat> well, Richard, let's switch gears for a moment now, and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm blue Caribbean water. Richard. What is your earliest childhood memory? You know, I struggled with this one, but I can tell you some early memories from my elementary, what we call primary school, and that was the 16 mil films that they used to play every Friday afternoon. Mm. We had, uh, you know, Disney films about maths and science. We had a documentary called A City Awakens, which opened my eyes to the world and sort of what happens on the streets with cleaners before anyone wakes up, and even some incredible observational documentaries showing slow motion footage. I still distinctly remember seeing the slow motion footage of dogs lapping water out of a bowl and just being amazed at their tongues and how they work and, and how incredible that was. Wow. Well, my friend, as much as I think you've connected these dots, I'll still ask the question, uh, why do you think this memory is so clear? Well, I think these short films engaged me. They challenged my thinking they opened my mind to a world I hadn't you know yet experienced or considered whether that was an area of study I hadn't considered um, you know like I was I was inspired about maths and, and you know the geometric calculations that Donald Duck was able to use to to pocket the ball and the holes of that billiard table <laughs> or, or, or just finding another person's point of view my, my world expanded a little bit so I think that's you know that sort of set the tone for why I love short films I love it most definitely. He connected the dots. He doesn't need me. Uh, we better switch sides <laughs> of mics, right? <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, if we fast forward to when you were 12, what was your favorite song? Now, this one I had to look up, um, uh, you know, Googling what, what was popular that year. And one that stuck out was um, Jack and Diane, John Cougar Mellencamp. Uh, it had a great beat, and I'm a drummer, but I, I just... Also, I think I love the narrative in it, the story of two kids growing up in the heartland. But I'm interested, why did you choose 12? 
Oh, that's an age. Yeah, that's a great so, uh, age. Uh, I think uh, for me, uh, it was the transition time. I do, like you, we have primary and secondary school. And uh, mm-hmm. when I went to secondary school, because of those that surrounded me, I think it impacted uh, the music I listened to. So as opposed to what I was surrounded to, that I that surrounded with, that I loved, it switched mm-hmm. to what I'm surrounded with by, uh, if you would, uh, influencers, right? And that Mm. then kind of doesn't help with what I believe happens with music, which is we as individuals are an antenna for who we are as connecting to the vibrations of music. And it's more than Mm. just... I like that song, but something in that mm. song that connects to who you are at a deeper level. And it's my, just mm. my thing. I, I'm not sure where the science is on that, but so far, mm. so far, uh, my little experiment has shown to be <laughs> uh, rather accurate as to yeah. how it connects. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right at, at, at that transitional time. And, and, you know, I always tell my girls I'm stuck in the 80s and... Um, you know, yeah. that was my decade and all those songs have somehow etched there, you know, yeah. that started when I was 12. So. Yeah, and I mean, there are things in memories that do not come out as uh, mm. as um, as uh, uh, as impressionable as music, right? It's like you could, mm. when you started going back there, it was like one after the next, right? And you could possibly mm. pull on the memory and remember the words of the song. Uh, mm. So it's really amazing. It's a huge conversation. <laughs> mm. yeah. Exactly. Too long for 12 minutes. Oh, it? there we go. And again, <laughs> there's 12, right? So it's a 12-minute convo, a song yeah. at 12. Hey, well, Richard, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready? I love this. I love this. Have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes, as a parent, my children, but specifically skills with filmmaking or film appreciation. I'll only pass it on to those who show an interest. Mm, Now, you said you're married, right? How long have you been married for? 20 years last wow, week. Wow, congratulations. What's your wife's name? Thanks. Jen. 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 Mm. All right. Hi, Jen. Salute to you. This guy must be <laughs> challenging to be married to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't start. <laughs> well, you said you have two daughters, right? Sure. Uh, do you believe in God? Yes, but I'm curious. Why do you ask? Do you believe in God? I do believe in God. Yeah, I ask because I think it needs to be a question that is asked to remove the stigmatization that goes and uh, creates a format of not allowing individuals to bypass what another individual believes and to build a relationship, thereby creating a forum that is better for relationship. And then we could have that conversation again, yeah, if I do or if I do not, but it's still means that the individual is beautiful whether he believes or she believes or do not believe. Hey, these were meant to be quick questions. Well, <laughs> I'll edit you out. Oh, that's the, that's the, the great player I have. <laughs> uh, do you have an inner circle of friends? I do. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? Uh, no, but what is TV these days? I guess I think of it as passive watching. Yeah. So yeah. on that, I'd say I do it like about an average of an hour a day or more. Well, what about screen time, the phone and the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's sadly the laptop. So yes, I create screen content. So I have to, and I love it, except I don't like what it's doing to my body as I sit, sit yeah. punched over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've stand, I've, I've stand on this uh, particular quest uh, before. When I did a thousand and one, I sat. Um, but yeah, standing it hurts, mm. but it do, it doesn't hurt. Uh, yeah, so it hurts, <laughs> but it doesn't hurt. So it hurts while I'm standing here, but then when I get away, it feels much, much, much better. Um, yep. So yeah, standing is really great, and you should see yep. my standing desk. I'll take a picture. It's really amazing. Ooh, it's a concoction. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, if you had to share with us, Richard, your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, what would you say that is? I love this question. I'm an '80s kid who grew up with you two, and they had a song that said, "I don't believe rock and roll can really change the world," and mine is similar. I'd love to believe that short films can change the world. 
but I know at the very least they can start a good conversation. Mm, love it. Richard, this has been a great pleasure, my friend. Truly a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Uh, just to wrap up and say, look, short films are potent and powerful. And I guess there's a large chunk of your audience who are entrepreneurs and they probably already know the power of short films. People spending big bucks each year creating video ads that attempt to you know, inform or promote or sell an idea. But if you're thinking uh, of having one made for yourself, do this. Instead of selling an answer, ask a question. Tell people, don't tell people what to think. Challenge them by asking them what they already think because it might suggest a rethink. And what's more, when you ask, you'll be making a connection. And the best businesses are built on connections. Love it. Richard Lee, thank you, my friend, for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. Thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.